When we talk about the human body and we look at the anatomy and physiology of it, the physiological aspect or the function is really on a chemical level. And so the chemistry of any sort of life, including us, comes down to the biochemistry of it. Chemistry can be broken up into one of two groups. It could be broken up into inorganic chemistry or organic chemistry. Inorganic chemistry or involve inorganic compounds, which pretty much don't usually contain carbon, with the exception of maybe carbon dioxide. And so there's some very small molecules like salts and waters and acids and bases, etc. However, really what we're going to look at with the biochemistry or the physiolo physiological aspect is we have to look at the organic part or organic chemistry which involve organic compounds. An organic compound is pretty much any compound found in a living thing and it has to contain carbon. These are typically very very large molecules and they covalently bond to each other which is why they can make such humongous molecules and the four different types that you would know that we're going to review are carbohydrates, lipids, proteins, and nucleic acids. And one thing is that people kind of get, um, they kind of freak out when they come to organic chemistry. I know when I was in college, everybody feared organic chem one and organic chem two. I don't know if it because the content or the teacher, but um, you don't need, you could stay calm because organic chemistry, you know, if you take it one step at a time, it really makes sense in how it works. And everything that we know, there's a famous scientist Carl Sagan, who says, somewhere, something incredible is waiting to be known. I really like this saying when it comes to aspects of the human body, because everything that we know or plan on knowing in the future comes down to the biochemistry of it. I think this is on a biochemical level. So the medicines that make us better or the diseases that cause us to be sick or die or any sort of new treatments that come about, it all is based on the chemical or the biochemical level on why they work and why they get developed into new medications. And so this is very important for at least um, future scientific research. You should get into uh, biochemistry if you want to do that. So let's look at carbon real quick, and we're going to focus on the organic chemistry part. Carbon is a very special molecule, and the main reason why is because it could form strong covalent bonds. It has four valence electrons, which means it's looking for four more. It's not willing to give up, but it's not willing to really take on, so it will form covalent bonds by sharing. And if it loves to share, it's a very social atom. It will bond to many other elements and atoms to make very large complex molecules. This is an example of one. Look at all the carbons in this long chain. We call this a hydrocarbon chain. Some of you may recognize it as a fatty acid, which we're going to get to. And then over here, these are different amino acids, which make up protein and you can see no matter where you look you see a long chain of not super long not as long as this one but long chains of carbon molecules that are all connected to other ones so it is a very social atom 98% of your body weight is made up from only six elements and you remember may remember schnapps so schnapps we have carbon hydrogen nitrogen oxygen phosphorus and sulfur so carbon is a big component but the most the the one with the most percentage is actually oxygen which makes up around 65% of that and then carbon i believe is down around 18% and then I think nitrogen is like at 3% and then hydrogen is about 9 or 10% of that. And so those of the six are the big four that make up at least 96% of your body weight. And so if we look at an example of a large molecule, you may remember this one as adenosine triphosphate or ATP. It's our energy molecule. And I, I put it here so you could see all the nitrogen and carbons and oxygens and hydrogens and phosphors that make it up. So most of the molecules in your body are going to have at least four or more of those essential elements. And if we look at the periodic table, the ones highlighted in pink, those are their schnapps right there. And then in blue and green, are those are called different trace elements. They're important for different functionings, but we see them in very minute amounts, less than a fraction of percent. So calcium is important in bones, um, magnesium, sodium, and potassium are important for cell communication. They're all very important in atoms. So these are our four big organic macromolecules, carbohydrates, lipids, proteins, and nucleic acids. You learned about these in a previous biology class, so we're just going to review the main facts about them right now. The first thing before we get to the individual ones is let's look at them as a whole. One thing about macromolecules is that macromolecules are large molecules because they are polymers. Polymer is made up of many smaller parts called monomers. Poly means many, mono means one. Mer means part, so many parts, 
or one part. So if you get a bunch of single units or monomers and connect them together in chemical reactions, you could get large polymers. And the large polymers that we're going to talk about are right here. They are carbs, lipids, proteins, and nucleic acids. Each one of these four macromolecules has a specific monomer and a specific polymer that makes it what it is. And we're going to look at them. If you look at this chart, again, amino acids are made of, I mean, Amino acids are the monomer of proteins. Nucleotides are the monomers of nucleic acids. Monosaccharides are the monomers of carbs. And fatty acids are the monomer-like part of lipids. And then we can look at the polymers as well before they make up larger structures. So one other thing that we have to talk about with macromolecules is that how do you get these monomers into the polymers, or how do you even break them down? So when you eat different carbohydrates, how do you break it down to get the energy out of it? We have two main reactions in chemistry that break things down and build things up. The first one is called dehydration synthesis. Dehydration means a loss of water. Synthesis means to put together. So this is a reaction that involves getting rid of water in order to put two molecules together. And if we look at this, we have these green circles are three monomers. And these two are already connected with the bond, but we want to put this monomer together with this one. To do that, we have to remove a hydroxyl group, an OH group. If we take that out and we take a hydrogen off of the other side, that's H2O. There's your water molecule that's dehydrated or left the equation. And then the atoms that are left behind will form a covalent bond that connects the two monomers together. So dehydration joins together. The opposite of dehydration is hydrolysis. Hydro means water. Lysis means to break or to split. So you're literally breaking things apart by using water. And if you look at the reaction, if we have, here's, here's that monomer that we put together, but if we want to break this, mon this polymer back down into the monomers, you add the water back in, and then the hydroxide goes on one side, the hydrogen goes on the other, and it separates them completely. And you could do that here as well. So dehydration puts together and hydrolysis breaks apart. All the macromolecules have that. This is showing a protein being built up together. And so we have over here two separate amino acids, which makes proteins. And if you take the OH off one side and the H off the other, there it is. There's the, oh, it's up here. There's the water coming out. And then it'll leave this bond right here and this bond right here, this, the carbon and the nitrogen will bond to each other and connect the two amino acids together. And then you could go in the reverse direction if you want to break down these two, this dipeptide or if it's a polypeptide, you add the water back in and it will separate the two. So let's talk about carbohydrates first. So carbohydrates. Carbohydrates contain three of the six main molecules or atoms that make up life. So of the schnapps, it contains carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. And when you break down the word, carbo refers to carbon, hydrate refers to water. And so here's carbon, and H2O is water. So there's always twice as much hydrogen because it's made out of water and carbon, H2O. Its main function is for energy. It could either store it or use it or it could, I'm sorry, it could store energy or it could actually build things with it. So the two main roles, energy storage and it could build things and use it for structural purposes. The ones that you'll know are sugars and starches. And if we look at this, um, each one of these is going to be a separate sugar molecule that we know is glucose. So here's glucose. Its formula is C6H12. O6, and you could connect these monomers or single units together to make larger sugar complex carbohydrates called, in this case, it's, this is called starch. Let's look at the monomer of monosaccharides. So the monomer of a monosaccharide, monomer means the smallest part, I spelled that wrong, monomer, it's called a monosaccharide. It literally means one sugar, saccar means sugar. And so glucose, fructose, galactose, deoxyribose, and ribose are the five major examples of a monosaccharide. They're a single sugar unit. The most famous one is glucose, of course, and here it is down here, and it is C6H12O6, but sometimes, so we don't have to draw it all out, we use a skeleton model right here, simplified representation. This O represents where the oxygen is, and then any point in chemistry is where carbon is located. So these are all different carbons. So this is a skeleton model. It's just a lot easier to use. And why do we need glucose? 
for ATP. That's right. So ATP is our energy source and glucose is what is converted, is what is used to be broken down to make our ATP in cellular respiration. So it is a super important molecule. The deoxyribose and the ribose up over here, those are found in our genetic material because our DNA and RNA also contain sugar. Let's look at a disaccharide. A disaccharide simply means two sugars. And so if we take two sugars, in this case glucose and fructose, and we do a dehydration and put them together, we will get a disaccharide, two sugars. And in this case, this one is called sucrose, and you'll know sucrose as our common everyday table sugar. Our next one is when we take a glucose and a galactose, two monosaccharides, put them together through dehydration, and you get a disaccharide called lactose, which is also known as milk sugar. And then the last major type of disaccharide is maltose, where it's made of two glucoses that are dehydrated together. And you'll know it from um, candies like Whoppers. It's made of malt, malted milk, and um, malted chocolate. It has a very unique taste. It's not a sweet taste like the um, fructose or, the, or even the sucrose. It's a little bit different, but some people don't like it, but it is another disaccharide. All right, now, so we have monosaccharides, which are single sugars. We have disaccharides, which are doubled sugars. And then we have many sugars, which are polysaccharides. And glycogen is one of the examples. And you can see that each one of these green um, hexagons, those are representing single glucoses. And when we put a bunch of glucoses together, we can make large polysaccharides. And in this example, it is glycogen. And so let's look at the different types of polysaccharides. The four major different types of polysaccharides are starch, glycogen, cellulose, and chitin. Remember, there's two major functions for carbohydrates. The first major function is for storage of energy. And the second major function is for structural purposes to build things. And so when we talk about the digestive system and uh, nutrition in this class, we're really gonna be talking about the storage form of energy. So starch is simply a bunch of glucose molecules put together. You could easily break them down to get the glucose for energy. Glycogen, when we have extra sugar in our body, it's still good, and so you wanna store it away for when you do need it, when you can't eat, and so you will store all your extra glucoses in a long chain called glycogen, so that's why it's storage. The other one is called um, these are, these are storage polysaccharides. These are structural polysaccharides. They build stuff. Uh, plants, are, plants and even um, parts of, actually, may, may, plant, this is the most plentiful um, sugar on the planet, probably, cellulose, because it's found in plants. It makes up their cell walls, and so it gives it a uh, structure part. And then there's chitin, which is found in um, the cell walls of fungi and also the exoskeletons of different arthropods and crustaceans, and so the crunchiness of the outside, that is chitin. So anytime that we eat cellulose plants or even any sort of mushrooms, you are actually consuming a compound that you cannot digest. We call it fiber, or dietary fiber, because it helps regulate your digestive system, but fiber is indigestible. We do not have the enzymes to break these down. They're too rigid and strong. We do have the enzymes to break this down, because that is why this is for energy. And so those are the different types of carbohydrates.